What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And in today's video, I have a real treat for you guys, especially those that are beginners. We're diving into the world of Linux commands, those critical skills that form the backbone of your Linux expertise. Now remember, learning these commands isn't just about memorizing. It's about understanding how to navigate and control one of the most powerful operating systems out there. So whether you're here out of curiosity, necessity for work, or a personal challenge, stick around as we explore these essential tools that will empower your computing experience so let's open up these terminals and get ready to type some commands let's get to it all right so I'm logged into my virtual machine this is Ubuntu 22.04 it's basically one of those flavors of Ubuntu but it uses the XFCE desktop and it really doesn't matter what Ubuntu flavor or Linux distribution that you're using. All of these commands I'll show in this video are base level utilities that are included within the operating system. And just to explain a little more, Linux commands can sometimes feel like a whole different language. And in a way they are, they're basically the language of your computer. And so understanding this language allows you to communicate directly with your system, telling it exactly what you want it to do without the need for graphical interfaces. And this direct communication is not only faster, but also much more powerful. And in my demonstration, we'll start with the basics and gradually build up to more useful commands. We'll cover everything from how to figure out where you are in your system to how to create, copy, and delete files. And each command comes with its own set of options and nuances, which we'll definitely go into. And by the end of this video, you'll have a solid foundation to perform everyday tasks in Linux through the command line. And again, remember, Mastering these commands will boost your confidence and skills in handling Linux systems. So whether you're managing your own personal server like I do here at the house or troubleshooting issues or working on becoming a systems admin, these skills are indispensable. And so let's go on and open up our terminal. Let's hit terminal emulator. And what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little more so you guys can see these commands and what they actually do. So first up, I wanna cover the PWD command. And this command is your digital you are here map. Similar to how when you first walk into the mall, a lot of times they have that map up there and they'll have the red dot with some text right next to it that says you are here. This is your location within the mall to help you navigate to whatever stores you're looking for. That's essentially what the PWD command is. It tells you the current directory you're working in and PWD actually stands for print working directory. And it's super useful when you start navigating through different folders. So let's go on in first up, show you guys the man page, which is something I always like to do with every command. I always go through and show you guys the man page and man is one of those commands I'll cover later on, but I'll use it throughout. So you guys can see the information about a particular command. So man PWD and press enter. And this will give you some information about it. And like I said a little bit earlier, there are a lot of options for most of these commands. And you can pull up those options by looking at the man page or the manual. And so let's go down and quit and give you guys a quick example. So currently we are in our home directory, which is represented by this tilde. But let's go down and clear and then let's type PWD so you guys can see where our home directory is located. And our home directory is located under home Josh. And that's essentially how you use the PWD command. Now next is LS. And let's say you want to see what files and folders you have in a particular directory. Well, the LS command will give you those details. And let's go down and pull up the man page for that as well. So let's type man and then LS. And it may or may, some of these commands may or may not have a man page, depending on how old they are. 
a lot of times they just go on and remove it because it's understood what the command actually does. But LS basically stands for list and it's basically listing the directory contents. So depending on your working directory, it'll list out the files in folders underneath that directory. So just wanted to pull up the man page, let's quit. And then right now, like I said, we're in that home directory. So I'm gonna type PWD so we can pull it up again. And then we can type LS and press enter. And this will give you all the directories within your home directory. And if you have files there, they'll be listed as well. Now, let's say you want to see more details. This is where those options come in. So I want to at least give you another example. So if we type LS and then dash L, this will give you details such as the sizes, modification dates, as well as permissions of a particular folder or file within this working directory. So let's go down and press enter, boom. And like I said, it'll give you that inf extra information of each one of the files or directories that is in our working directory. So super cool, right? Super simple. Now moving on to CD. Now CD, this command lets you move from one folder to another. Cause currently, if you look up here, when we ran the PWD command, we stayed in our home directory, which is under home and Josh, that folder is the location that we're currently at. But let's say we want to go into our documents directory that's under this directory. Now, one thing you'll notice in Linux, there are multiple ways to do things. You could put the full path or the relative path. And let me show you guys that right fast. So we can type CD and then we can actually just type documents. And that is considered our relative path because we're our, we, the system understands that we are in our home directory. And if we want to change directories, it'll default to the directories under the current working directory that we're in. And so let's press enter and it'll take us to that documents directory. And like I said before, the location was represented by the tilde. And as you can see right here, now that we change directories to our document directory, you'll see that tilde and then a forward slash and then the directory that we're currently working in. And then also if we run that PWD command again, this will give you the full path to where we are. So home, Josh, and then we're in that documents directory now versus where we were earlier, where we were in home and Josh. And so let me clear right fast and run the man page for CD so you guys can at least see that. Yeah, and like I said earlier, certain commands don't have a man page. It's pretty much understood that you know how to use it. This is like one of those earlier commands that are very simple to use. And so a lot of times they won't have a menu. It all depends on the command. But back to, like I said, it's multiple ways of doing things. But let's say you want to go back to your home directory. There is the command of just CD and CD will always default back to your home directory. So no matter where you are within the operating system, as far as the directory that we change to, if you just type CD by itself, this will take you back to the home directory, as you can see. So let's uh, go back to our documents directory and press enter and let me show you guys something else because there is another option in there you could type no matter where you are within the operating system let's say you want to go up one directory within the directory tree so all you have to do is type cd and then dot dot and this will take you up one directory so let's press enter that'll take us back to our home directory obviously it's the same you know because we're just in one directory below our home directory that's why it just went up one directory back to our home directory similar to just typing cd but if we were in deeper directories it'll only take us up one directory above the one that we're currently in and this leads me to the next command and that is make directory so let's say we want to create a new folder and then i'll give you guys another example of the cd dot dot once we make a directory and the command is written mkdir and before we do that let me move my mouse out the way we want to i want to show you guys the man page for make directory press enter that'll show you the options but as you can see that is the name of it and it stands for make directories. And we have a bunch of options as well. Let's quit. So you can go through and check that out on your own, but let me show you guys something. So if we type MKDIR, and let's say we want to create a specific directory name, whatever we want, we can name it, whatever we want. I'm gonna name it test and press enter. And if we use the LS command to list out the files and directories under this 
directory, we could press enter. And as you can see, it creates that directory that we specify using the make directory. And if you don't type in a full path, it'll automatically put that directory within the current working directory that you're in. Just so you guys know. Now, let me show you guys an example of using that CD dot dot. So let's CD into our documents directory and press enter. And let's say we want to make another directory and we're going to name this test two. press enter. If we LS our documents directory now, you'll see that we have a directory called test two. And then let's CD to the test.2 directory, press enter. And if we print working directory, boom, you'll see that this is the full path. This is the current working directory that we're in. And if we type CD dot dot, press enter, you'll see that it take us up one directory and we could type the PWD command again, press enter. You'll see that we are in home Josh documents. So it took us up one directory. So that's one way of moving directories or move within the directory tree. Now, let me go back into this directory again, press enter. Cause I want to show you guys the CD command by itself and let's type PWD boom. You'll see we're under that directory. If we type CD by itself, that will take us back to our home directory. Like I said, it'll default to the home directory. Now I showed you guys how to create directories. Let me show you guys how to create files. And there is a command let's clear right fast. So you guys won't get too confused, but we can CD back to our documents directory and press enter. And we can do a print the working directory, just show you guys where we are. And we can also LS this directory as well. So we can see what's in that directory. Now I want to show you guys a command called touch. And this command allows you to create files within a particular directory. And so let's go to the man page for touch right fast and press enter touch change files timestamps. Yeah, it's, it was created for a specific reason as far as the command and why they created it. But most people use this command to create files and you can see all the options that you have for this command. So let's quit the man page and let's run the touch command and let's create a test dot txt. So a test file. And what it's going to do is going to default to the current working directory, which we're in our documents directory. So if we press enter, boom. And if we run the LS command again, just like here above, you see how it has that one directory we created. If we LS again, we'll see that we have that text file. And so that is the purpose of touch. And like I said, in Linux, it's multiple ways of doing things. You can create a file using a text editor. I don't want to go too deep into that. I'll probably do that in a later video. I cover text editors, but there is like a text editor like Nano that's installed by default. You can type Nano and then test test and press enter and it'll open up the text editor. Like I said, I don't want to show you guys that yet. I want to show that in a future video, but you can create a file. It'll open it up within the text editor. You can edit what you want within that file and then save it and it'll store it in the current working directory. And so that's super cool. Now let's show you guys how to copy files. And there's a command called the CP command. So if we type man and then CP, it may pull up a, yeah, a manual. But yeah, copy files and directories. And this applies to files and directories, like I stated. So let's get out of this right fast. And I want to show you guys both options. Let's LS again so we can see what's in there. We have that test two directory, and we also have that test.txt file. So what you want to do is type CP for copy. And then what you want to do is put the directory or file that you want to copy first. So let's type test two. And then let's say we want to create another directory or we want to copy this and rename it to something else, because obviously you can't have the same name within a directory. It's similar to windows. When you copy something, you have to create a different name. And so you put the name, the file or directory that you want to copy name first and then you want to put the name of what you want to name it after it copies second and press enter and i apologize for that i forgot when you're copying directories it is a little bit more that you have to do as far as options you have to use a dash or option and that's one thing about linux and i'm gonna leave this in the video so you guys can see that i made a mistake but 
there is the dash or option in order to copy directories. You have to use recursive, essentially what that means. And like I said, I don't, I wanna keep this at a beginner level so you guys can understand it, but let's type in that same command and I'll just put the dash or in there so you guys can see, but test two and test one. And so that's essentially how you type it, press enter. And as you can see, we didn't get an error. Now, if we LS this directory, Boom, you'll see that we have a test one directory now. And sorry about that, uh, messing that up. I totally forgot about it, but I'm glad I made that mistake so you guys can see the mistake and how you can correct it. And how Linux also gives you most likely what you need to do in order to fix the issue that you had with the command you typed out. Now let's do the exact same thing for the file. And you don't have to use or for files because it's not a directory. And so let's just type CP, and then let's go with that test.txt file. And let's say we want to make a test2.txt. And let me move the cursor out the way, but so you can see the full command, but let's press enter. Boom. As you can see, we did not need to type that dash or, and let's ls that directory again, we'll see that we have two files in there. So we got that test two that we just created. Now, lastly, let me go down and show you guys how to remove some of this stuff. So it's the same with copy as far as directories. You have to use dash or for it. Sometimes you have to use force. You wanna be very careful with the remove command, which is rm. And let's type the, let's clear right fast. And then let's type man, or M, press enter, remove files or directories. And you got your options down here. You can scroll through and look at, but let's go down and hop in and do it. So let's ls this directory again so we can bring up whatever is in there. And you kind of want to find what you want to delete first. That's my rule of thumb. You want to look for it and find it specifically. So you can type or M and let's get rid of that test2.txt and press enter. And that'll remove that file. And if we ls this directory again, you'll see that test2.txt is gone. And then it's the same with directories, but you have to use the dash or. And you may have to use forced or the dash f option as well, because if a directory is not empty, it will block you from deleting it because it doesn't want you to delete any files that are underneath that directory if you didn't want to. So it makes you put an extra step in there. But let's run the remove command against test one and press enter and as you can see it says cannot remove test one is a directory so let's go on and type that dash or in there press enter and that'll get rid of that directory for us boom and let me show you guys what i'm talking about so if we type touch and then we we can create something within that directory even though we're not in that directory by typing out the path so let's go test two and then put a forward slash and then let's say we want to create something underneath it so let's type or create another test file within here so let's go test one.txt press enter and then now let's say we want to remove that test two directory so let's go test two and let's press enter and as you can see you need to use the dash or so let's type the dash or now and that will try to remove it or it did remove it it all depends like sometimes you'll see it say you cannot remove it for whatever reason and you have to put that f in there in order to force it to remove that directory but most of the time the dash or will catch it it all depends now lastly one of the commands i've been using throughout this video is man and so let's clear right fast and let's also cd and it'll take us back to our home directory and clear again so you can type man man and this will give you the information about the man command and as you can see it's an interface to the system reference manuals so all the commands that are on the system it depends on if they have them in a database it'll pull up the manual for that command all you have to do is type man and whatever command it is like we use the touch command and press enter it'll pull up that manual it basically queries the database that holds all the manuals for all the commands that it has available on the system and there you have it eight essential linux commands that are going to make navigating and managing your linux system a whole lot easier i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the keep it techie channel for more tech tips and tricks
Also, if you have any questions or if there's something specific you want to learn about Linux, drop a comment below. I love hearing from you all and it helps me tailor these videos to exactly what you need. Now, remember, every pro was once a beginner and you're already on your way to becoming a Linux expert. So keep practicing, keep learning, and as always, keep it safe.